again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And thank you for tuning in again. Um, so, summer's over. Fair warning. Officially, because I have a really, scarf on. I was going to say, and I have fleece. Um, but I'd still have flip-flops because I refuse. <gasps> Smart. I got at least another month. Yeah. Um, but it was really gorgeous this weekend. It was un un unusually warm, I thought. I was doing some gardening, and I was like, oh, holy cow. I'm, like, roasting and sweaty. And, and I'm was like, what happened? Only supposed to start raining tomorrow, yeah, so I was going to do all my leaves today, I and I did a little over the weekend. But I was yeah. like, "Full man, it's just there." Yeah, I, I know. We have a there's lot of a leaves. lot of stuff, <laughs> right? And there's a lot of stuff. People, I, I, you know, there's a lot that happens between like October, the middle of September, and the middle of and like November first because of the rain. The rain throws it off because everything gets wet and gross. But yes. hopefully, it'll be. <laughs> I do know it's going to be cool. I think it's Thursday night or Friday night. It's going to be like 35 degrees. So if you have any tender plants, I'm going to gather them together. I mean, that's probably not up near the house, but I'm going to throw something over them because my, I guess they're impatience, I think. Oh, no, no, no. My begonias that I bought on clearance late in the season for like a buck are like thriving. Oh, so really? I don't want to kill them off. Oh, yeah. So I'll gather those up and I'll get rid of all the other stuff that looking a little scarce. So speaking about impatience. Impatience. <laughs> I'm impatient. I'm impatient. About I think. everything. You know, what? like I was speaking about the Facebook fight this morning. It's, you know, it's, I'm frustrated that we, every time we try and fix a problem, it seems like it we opens create. up more problems. And I know you wanted to talk about bail well, no, reform. So, so, fine. so well, maybe we can use that as an example to sort of Well, because I, you know, not being in the legislature right now, I don't actually pay that close attention to everything because I actually have a life. That was what, that's one of my pet, my things lately as I've talked to different people for a variety of reasons and a variety of, and I think, wow, everything in your life should not revolve around politics and you shouldn't be angry so much. You know, like literally there are just people who I agree with, uh, you know, on issues, but they're so intense all the time that I think, wow, you really probably... Like, you should get a little well, more balance. I, I think, exactly. And, so and I, was I think say the two of us things. are both good examples. Like, you you have, you have, get up, you read the paper, you go, you know, you have peaceful time. I like to guard. Well, my, argue, <laughs> my, my husband might argue about how peaceful it is. He right, just, but, he works in his office yeah. and I sit in the living room or out, out on the porch the paper. and, you know, generally just sort of but yell I mean, at the you know, newspaper a Even lot. if you're a legislator, <laughs> you still have to step back and enjoy life. Otherwise, you do become angry. Well, I think also the thing about balance is something that as a, uh, nation and certainly as granite staters is something we should be thinking about right yeah. so if everyone's kind of like mad and yelling at each other <laughs> and all of that stuff it's like at some stage you have to ask yourself is this is actually it, are, we, are we being manipulated yes, into, into this frequency yes. and this energy of yeah. right and i do think we are i, I mean think we are too because it's just we're the, we're seeing the 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 i think the last throes of a empire right in the sense that you know we we have too many laws there is too there is too much pitting of groups yeah. against each other and so uh, you know, the, the media has to actually take things yep. to these extremes because, to you know, get you to pay attention because to them. everyone Cause... wants to, I mean, and I encourage people actually to switch off. You know what? If yep. you can have a game night, yep. watch a movie, yep. go for a hike, work in your garden, love your friends and neighbors, yep. go help someone, go to a soup kitchen, right. do some good it's stuff. Like it's but, still but, a... but like to be upset about like yeah. Trump and 24 seven, I have, you know, 2020 election and all of that. It's like the only reason we, all of us care is because government's too big right and I, I you know you say that about like i mean i don't want to make this about trump but this there is this direct anti-trump anti-trump you know like everything in life revolves around trump now i um I, and i don't care how people what people's views are on things so you got all this um discussion over e-cigarettes and vaping and should they be banned and all these things and um someone who's a facebook friend who um i know is very anti-trump and is a very very left and that's fine um said so what how did these get approved by the fda is it because of the trump appointees and i thought <laughs> 
what? So I literally Googled because, you know, I take a step and say, well, let me Google. Who approved? Did the FDA approve? Well, the FDA actually never approved any of these items. They only recently in like last in 2016 got regulatory authority over them. So I commented back because I'm thinking, OK, let's take this as a little, you know, maybe you didn't know the FDA didn't approve them. So no. And I got back. Meaning what? And I was like, oh, meaning you're mistaken. I'm answering your meaning question. Meaning you're mistaken that somehow, I said, I interpreted your post to mean that somehow Trump is responsible for e-cigarettes and vaping. Oh, okay. Well, I don't really think everything. You know, that- and, and okay, let's talk about that a little bit. So this whole, so Massachusetts just banned yes. the use of all e-cigarettes for the next four months while they try and figure some stuff out. So I am someone who does vape. Yeah. Um, I quit smoking you're by an adult. vaping. I think you're an adult. Uh, I am an adult. Okay. Um, I also believe that you know we are free human beings that are mm-hmm. allowed to make decisions about what we are allowed to put in our own Whether bodies, it's... and that you don't get to tell me right. what that is. Right. I, I am a you know, sovereign, free human being, and yeah. I will make my own decisions about my own body for myself. Now, of course, that will make you a criminal, depending right. on who's in charge right. of what, right? So anyway, so so with the the vape stuff. Um, I mean, based on what I'm reading and what I'm trying to sort of figure out is it's because we now have this black market, right? So in the same way (laughs) that, you know, bathtub gin used to make people blind when we had prohibition, we have the same problem right Right. now. So basically what happens is all these cartridges come in from China. They apparently are like laced with up to like lead and stuff where I was like, oh, okay, now I'm going to have to like really Really. go because I don't look. Because right, you are saying, I don't right? know if I want to put this in my body. Right. And and all I want is I want to be like, I want to know right. that these products are safe. So so just to take a step back for a second, right? So I'm not a huge fan of regulatory right. stuff either, right? So I'm like, okay, so if we're saying that we have this market, and, and the interesting thing, and, and you know, this is both tobacco, but this is primarily yeah. cannabis, right? right? So if we look at the cannabis market as something that has just recently emerged, right? It's, right? it's a new market. Right. And and to give you an idea of how awesome America is, so I have a friend who's uh, in, in Holland, right, yeah. where they've, pot's been legal since Forever. the 70s, right? But there you can only get, like, leaves and you can get brownies. You can't get, like, <laughs> all the other stuff that we have only in America. Only leaves and brownies. Right? So, so okay. she, I mean, she jokingly was like, I guess how I gained 20 pounds right? in three months, you know? Uh, and apparently you have to eat a lot of the brownie, right? Whereas in America, because we're so entrepreneurial, right. there were all these people who were kind Coming of up with like all these forms, new products Candy, and, right, and all right. these things. And then as it as the market legalized, all these things came to market. So that is like, yay, America, yay, Americans, yay, entrepreneurship, yeah. yay, business people. Right. Now we have the government, right? And all these control freaks and authoritarians who are like, oh, wait, no, we've got to, you know, so we are taking something where we have an opportunity to actually do things right, and we're just doing all of it so, so wrong. Right. And what we're seeing, the outcome of the so wrong, is this weird emerging like black market, right? right. Where, where um, And now we have all these unsafe products. And then wearing my libertarian hat for two seconds, if you're like, well, I don't want the regulatory stuff, then it's like, well, why are people putting crap on the market, right? right? Why, why, why is this bad stuff out there? But it is because it's in the black market. So we right. don't have any institutions or businesses whose job it is to, say, to, hey, wait to a test minute. all this of this and right. be like, this is a great product. This is a crap product. You should buy this and right. don't buy from these right. people, right? And so, and then in, in our market where we were like, Oh, now we're going to create this like soft medicinal market, but not recreational in New Hampshire, right? But now they're pricing it wrong. Right. So last week, whenever we had the vote where yes. they said, okay, we're not going to let people grow their own plants. I mean, just can we just stop for a second and go, all right, what's that about? Right. How, how does the government have the right to tell someone what plant? I know. They I can know. grow for their use in their own home right with their own body <laughs> oh i'm so irked today i can't even tell you you could tell i've been fighting no no uh, this is well and see we get our weekly we get to put it out there and right instead of typing um yeah 
So related to that, I guess, bail reform. Yeah, right? but because wanna, it's the same thing. Yeah. So I, this is the way it's bubbling up. Um, I, I keep reading articles. About, you know, the, this individual got arrested and the chief of police is upset about the bail reform because these people are recommitting crimes and blah, blah, blah. And it's dangerous for the community. So, you know, I, when you keep hearing something, I'm like, wait a minute, what is the problem here? And the way I've read, I read through um, SB 314, which is the bill that Governor Sununu signed this year that I believe maybe just went into effect. Then, um, let me look real quick. When does that go into effect? It goes into effect November 1st. So it hasn't even gone into effect. Oh, wow. Okay. But there was a bill. Last oh, year. Oh, no, I take that back. Repeal the uh, effective date. It did go into effect. As soon as it was signed, it went into effect. Um, so there's parts that are going into effect next year. Um, but there was a bill from last year, 2018, which is when we did bail reform. So basically, before we get into the nitty gritty of uh, recidivism, so if you're arrested, there's a difference between convicted and arrested. If you're arrested, you have the right to a trial and, you know, this whole, there's a whole litany of to get to justice. There's a process. There's a process and it works. We it, call it due process. Due process. <laughs> Please do due process. Um, do do it. But <laughs> if you're poor... You like you may not be able to make the bill. You might not be able to come up with five hundred dollars. And I mean, we could use the example of that eighteen-year-old that spent what nine months in jail because his family literally couldn't bail him out. Well, both couldn't bail him out, and they set his bail at ten thousand right. dollars because so, they wanted to punish him. Right, right, and that's not the purpose of bail. Bail is not meant to punish or. Um, have anything to do with guilt or innocence, it is to make sure that the person being charged with a crime actually shows up at court for due process. Right. That's all bail is about. It's not a form of punishment. Yep. So bail reform said, if you're poor, we can't make you pay. We're going to have to let you out. Right, because, you know, I mean, just to put it in sort of feudal medieval terms right. for you, we used to call those debtors prisons, right. right? Where you just like lock people up because they can't pay. <laughs> so looking at the, the most recent legislation, one change is that it does say um, the bail bond, the bail commissioner's fee of $40. If the defendant is indigent, the fee shall be waived. Shall is always a tough word, but that's about, we're talking about a $40 fee being waived there. Um, but the rest of it is basically saying, um, I mean, I'm going to read this. This is what this section of the law says. The court shall order a pre-arraignment or pre-trial release of the person on his or her personal recognizance or upon execution of an unsecured appearance bond in an amount specified by the court or cash or corporate surety bail subject to the condition, and this is important, that the person not commit a crime during the pe period of his or her release and subject to further condition or combination of conditions that the court may require unless the court determines by a preponderance of the evidence that such release will not reasonably assure the appearance of the person as required. A person who the court de determines to be a danger to the safety of that person or the public shall be governed in by the provisions of a different paragraph, except that evidence of substance misuse or homelessness may be considered, may be considered by the court, but such evidence shall not be the sole basis of dangerous determination. So if you're homeless, you are not automatically dangerous. If you are um, misuse, have sus a substance issue, that does not automatically make you dangerous. Now, if you just punch some guy in the face, the court can say you're a danger. There is nothing in the law that I can see that says if Joe is arrested on Monday, for possession, for prostitution, for whatever, and let go on a personal recognizance because they don't have any money, that if next week Joe commits a crime, he's going to again be released. All of the articles I'm reading in the media make it sound like we just keep letting these people out over and over and over again. But that's not how, the, so if we are, we're not following the law. But I don't even know that we are. So 
I, I, I take issue with, I do believe that if you are poor, you should not be kept in a cage until due process is, because we're not talking about a week here. We're talking about months and months and months. Which, you know, so let's jump in on that a little bit, right? So part of the challenge I think that the courts are facing today is uh, the overcriminalization of, of everything, everything, right? So if you make everything illegal, including right. kombucha, right. Watch previous shows if you want to know my <laughs> hatred of, you know, if everything that's right. not, uh, currently not legal is now illegal. Raw that's milk, not how it's raw supposed milk to ice work. Cream. Raw milk ice cream. You know, okay. So anyway. So because everything is overcriminalized, right. um, our courts are overloaded. Yes, right. They are. So, you know, I go to court from time to time, you know, to sit on on stuff or when I'm suing people or whatever, right? And it's always interesting to me to watch the judges. You know, everyone's there. Everyone's just trying to do the right thing. I fully right. appreciate that. But when you're doing these PR bail hearings and right. stuff, I'm like, can we just actually make that like a quick trial? Right. Like there's so much of this step by step by step thing so right. that now people are like oh you're only like having your trial a year right. after you got popped for whatever non really criminal thing it was that you did originally but all right the wheels of injustice turn <laughs> really slowly and here we go right and it's just like the whole system is broken right all the things we are doing is just slapping band-aids right on problems, but no one has the appetite to actually to dig actually in and find some solutions that maybe might be a little uncomfortable for certain the people. The real problems, that. right? So with bail reform, I know, I mean, I was a proponent that yeah. was really keen on it. Um, you know, I definitely was working with like civil liberties yeah. people. The ACLU is behind it. Bashir, who I've worked with on stuff. Uh, you know, former Supreme I mean, Court justices, this, this Chuck recent, Douglas. This recent bill came out of criminal House Criminal Justice, right. which has, you know, Strong Republicans on it, 20 to nothing. So. So, so so, people recognize, okay, there was a problem. So we all tried to do the right thing. Now mm -hmm. we have to listen to the feedback, I think, from the police chiefs yep. and stuff. And legitimately, I understand, right? Like if you're the person who's out there in the park right. and you're like, oh, you know. But the thing is, then we need to, the, maybe it's the bail part well, isn't the problem. It, it it's like, can we make the trials faster? In, can we just, like. In, what, I don't know if it was today or yesterday at this article was when they're talking about these different individuals that have been arrested and the police chief said well this individual we've had 111 interactions with him over the last 10 years first of all i'm glad that you know part of me says so you had 110 interactions that did not result in an arrest so you had interactions with somebody who did not was not doing something that you could arrest for so what is the relevancy of that Right? You, oh, so what, the interactions aren't arrests? It's that's just, just police uh, interactions. Mm -hmm. So somebody might have filed a complaint, but nothing that you would arrest on. So where is the, you know, I mean, if we're going to really talk down about the breakdown, so you're telling me you've interacted with this individual 110 times in 10 years. So what's that? 10 times a year. That's once a month. But you, up until now, there were no arrests or were there arrests? I don't know. And now, the, but now the big problem is, is that because the person's poor, they get to be out on bail and then got arrested again. Well, now they're not out on bail anymore. So what are you worried about? I, I don't, yeah. I find the whole thing peculiar. Like I think, and I, I get really well, tired. I think it's also, you know, I, I think there's an element of, you know, we're coming up to election season, mm -hmm. right? So, and we have a mayoral race right. here in Manchester. Right. And so there's going to be a lot of just mudslinging, right? One group of people want to be like, Joyce Craig, it's all your fault. Uh, the chief actually has served under, yep. you know, both uh, Our, Republicans yep. and Democrats and all of that. And, you know, and I don't really like those divisions. Yeah, I'm I like, le 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 let's just do what we can. Yeah, that's right. That's the best for the city. City at right. large, right? So maybe like part of it is just, I mean, I, I honestly was shocked. I drove by one of the parks the other day yeah. and I was like, yeah, oh. it looks pretty scuzzy. Yeah. I mean, it really is sketchy. Know, like, You're like, oh, that's not good. It's not great, you know, and having watched that show on, on uh, Seattle is dying, yeah. right? So, so I was like, okay, well, like we, we, don't we, wanna... we, we don't want to end up like that. Right. So like, what are the solutions, right? right? And I mean, the solutions are reducing criminalization. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the solutions are not this sort of catch and release. Like if you do have like a hundred, you know, yeah. if, if it's not a crime, I mean, that if that's it's not, but that, to the point where it's like, okay, so if these are mental health issues. Then let's find a way to fix that. Then let's start to divert resources well, funny from the criminalization process, from the police process, from the let's arrest and hurt people process to, hey, can we actually like treat these people for the well, problems and that's, they that have. Could, I had a conversation. I was at an event and I was having a conversation with a couple of people um, and it was brought up that the Demo that uh, Ray Buckley is going after Victoria Sullivan who's running for mayor because she voted against Granite Hammer. And I'm pretty sure, I, I should look it up, but I'm pretty sure I voted against Granite Hammer. And I'm pretty sure after Granite Hammer, uh, former police chief Willard said, if we're going to give any more money to anything, it needs to be to beds, not to more for more police officers. Right. Because Anybody who's being objective and not looking at this about their own personal fiefdoms, you know, <laughs> we d it's not we it, our needs are not more police officers for this in problem. Our needs are a way to make sick people not sick anymore so that we don't need so many police officers patrolling the parks and doing all this stuff. Um, so I, I just found it a little interesting that, you know, the Democrats are going after a Republican for wanting to fund beds. And right. it's like, wait a minute, isn't this supposed to be the other way? But then on the other side was talking with um, somebody who's a Democrat and they were getting it wrong. It, and this person happened to have been um, a former legislator. And they were like, well, the, the new bail reform uh, did away with the commission that looked at, like, that there was a committee that decided if this person was free, was poor and could be free. And I looked and I'm like, no, no, the commission was to go back every two years and make recommendations for changes and to look at why there's problems and, like, to look, actually maybe deal with this and how do we better make the courts more efficient both, um, both time wise and financially. So it was just interesting how people pull right and then little they, and then they repeat. But it, it, you really do have to and always go was, and read the words. I, I do believe, and I stand to be corrected on this, but my my recollection is that when we when we looked at the drug reform stuff, the other component of that was actually drug courts, right? And that that part didn't pass. So there's this issue. And, and, and one thing I really want to drive home today is we can't, if we, I believe in limited government, mm -hmm. right? So the way you limit government is you don't keep growing it. So if we have these problems and we have to create more beds, right. then we don't continue to grow the police department while we create the beds because right. now we're just compounding right the thing and the, the thing that no one wants to hear and no one has the appetite for and you know i'm the only one who'll go out there and say it is we have a problem i think chief capano called for 10 more officers for this that year solves it. it's not going to solve the problem what we should be looking at is to say okay if we well, number one, I mean, if, you know, if I was going to solve the world's problems here today on a Tuesday morning in Manchester, New Hampshire, President Trump needs to deschedule marijuana. I agree. That needs to happen. It has medicinal qualities. Right. It think, should I not be on the schedule. Right. We should stop well, with that. You, because you know what? Some of these problems with like spice and all this other crap because, that people is because of prohibition. Right. So, okay. So that would actually solve. A big, st that would a, be a piece a of it. A big chunk right. of it, right? right? So now these people, we can start to say, you are a patient. You are addicted to alcohol. You know, whatever, whatever it Some is. Some addiction. You know, so how do we fix that? We don't do it with more police officers if, clad in black with balaclavas, with guns going around tasing people. Right. We do that with actually creating social services. Right. But if we are going to create these social services, this side needs to get cut. What I don't right. want to see is this gets bigger, this gets bigger, and then we need the, oh, and now we need the courts to be bigger and whatever, right. which was the pushback on the drug courts, right? Because right? instead of taking away, instead of taking a little bit from the regular courts and pushing it to drug courts, we had to come up with all new funding. Right. And I mean, it's the same thing that we see like with right to know, right? right. With right to know, we have a lot of issues. People aren't being open and transparent. They're not following the New Hampshire constitution and they're shady as all yeah. get out. And um, so we talked about creating the right to know commission, which would be this commission of 14 people. And there was just a deep part of me that was like, we're just going to create more problems because now we're creating another 
body. And this is how government grows. So I'm saying like the way it should work is if we're going to do something to fix it here, then we got to cut somewhere else. Right. Grow something here, cut something here. Well, that's, this is that's how we will find sense. that balance, right? right? But if we keep growing, growing, right. growing, we're metastasizing a cancer. The state is a cancer yeah. on us. And we, right, and we can't, we, it doesn't need to just get bigger to make things better. No. And that's what people, people get caught up in that really easy. And you're like, well, well how about we do this? I mean, I say the and same the thing, thing about is, fire. We can do all of these things privately. Right. Well, that's Victoria keeps saying about work. that. Victoria says that, um, cause she did some ride alongs with the police and she's been out and about and she's gone and talked to some of these homeless people who actually have stories and whatnot. And she said, you know, we have, they talk about, um, the Sid right now, Mayor Craig, they talk about, oh, we're going to set up something for some treatment. There are faith-based groups that are saying we're already doing it. We just need a little assistance. So we don't need to recreate the wheel. We just need to help the people who are. And we had the same problem with different. And please, can we also stop with this nonsense about there isn't enough resources? The dude who runs, it's not Easter Seals, it was the other one. Um, the, this, uh, the ED, Executive Farnham, Director. Farnham uh, Center. Um, no, no, I it might it be, I, I want to say it was something with an H, but um, we, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, I mean, he, he makes half a million right, dollars right. a year in salary. Right. So please, we let's, don't need more let, of let, that. We, we need more of the people who are just trying to make their community better and just maybe need a little bit of funding but to make you, it work. Have you ever like you know? Because I'm really like knee deep in all of these issues now, um, which is good because right. I'm learning a lot too, and I have to sort of you know right. adjust I my like, expectations right. and be like. Uh, okay, I see your point here, you know, let's, how do we get from here to there? But if you actually pay attention, there are so many programs I know. with so much money going to it. I know. That I'm like, can someone just give me an org chart? Just, th this is all I want. Right, I, I want to see where all the money is. I want org charts of who's working on what and where the money is flowing. Is that too much to ask? No. I would I would fundraise and create a position whose only job it's is to, to take the, the state of New Hampshire, take the budget, follow the money, see which private groups are in there. And like, and, and just because... No one knows what we're doing anymore. Um, okay, so we have one minute. So I'm going to say, if you have any opinions, any ideas, any anything, please reach out to us either on our Facebook page, which you might be watching now, or um, at manchtalk at gmail.com. I also wanted to throw out quickly that we still have the farmer's market on Thursday afternoons um, right there in front of the Doubletree. This Friday, the 4th and 5th, um, and six this week, the New Hampshire Coin and Currency Expo at the Double Tree by Hilton. Uh, Wizards of Oz is at the Palace next week. Annie is at the Palace. Um, so there's lots of exciting things and going on. And the sun on. will come out. And tomorrow. the sun will come out tomorrow, <laughs> but it might go away the day after. Um, but that's all we've got. Um, we'd love to hear back from people about what they think we should talk about. If we need to reiterate something, if we need to go into more depth or whatever it is. But until next week, that's all we got. Peace Bye. out. Bye. Bye, folks.